the 2024 Toyota Venza. There's pretty much nothing new for the 2024 model year, but in this video, I will talk about what the Venza is, what it has to offer, and potential deals that you could get in this market, not for a 2024, but for a 2023 model year. Okay, these Venzas are all hybrid vehicles, traditional hybrids, that come with a 2.5 liter, naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine with three electric motors and a battery pack. You get 219 horsepower total, and it's mated to an eCVT, and all-wheel drive is standard across the board for the Venzas, and I really appreciate that. Fuel economy is around 40 in the city, 37 on the highway, very efficient vehicles, and the Toyota hybrid system seems to be one of the most reliable ones, and it does come with a pretty decent warranty as well. But here's the thing, the Venza, I love the way it looks. Even the interior design is a little bit different from your traditional Toyota products. However, driving wise, it still feels very similar to the Toyota RAV4. And that's kind of a shame because a lot of reviewers have said that, oh, the Venza is like a Lexus product. And that's absolutely a false statement. There's nothing really ultra refined or luxurious about driving the Venza. It still has that same cardboard like Toyota driving experience, which it's okay. I mean, it has its own charms, but once you start getting up to this price point, I feel like a lot of shoppers that are coming from other brands with higher expectations want a little bit more. Okay, we still have that loud four cylinder, uh, decent amounts of wind noise and road noise coming through. And for the Toyota shopper, they're okay with that because in all of my experience of testing vehicles and reading comments, the Toyota shopper has the lowest level of expectation out of any automotive consumer that I have ever seen to the point where they even go to defend mediocrity in some of these products. They say, oh, it's just an economy car. Why does it even have to be nice? You know, I've never seen a group of people who do a better job of blocking their own blessings than a traditional Toyota shopper. Um, they don't even want the best and Toyota knows this. They're not stupid. They know their customer base very well. And so Toyota doesn't have to try very hard. They don't have to make the best vehicles because they know people will keep coming back. So Toyota and Lexus can cut corners and it's totally okay. They will still sell and they will even sell for a markup. Whereas you have other brands such as Nissan and just about every Nissan would smoke a Toyota in terms of driving and refinement. But does anybody care? Absolutely not. Nissan will forever be hated. It doesn't matter if they build a Rolls Royce for $30,000. Nobody is going to bat an eyelid. Same thing with the Hyundai Kia products. They drive amazing. But see, these brands, they have to try hard. They don't have a choice. They have to be amazing because they're not respected. So they have to win people over by making vehicles that actually drive really nice, that are quiet and exude some type of premium feel. Uh, similar to Mazda, they've been crushing it for a long time, but does anybody want them? Not really. I'm not saying that these Toyotas are horrible. They still have their own charm. It's just that the Venza, at least, I wanted it to be a quieter and more refined experience. Maybe some more insulation material used in the engine bay. That would have been nice to see. Just subtle things, but it is what it is. I still recommend these vehicles to people because they are solid. They do get the job done and they are pretty spacious. For instance, the Venza is about five inches longer than a RAV4, which surprised me because the RAV4 looks like a pretty large vehicle, at least from the outside, but vehicles like the Forester, the Tiguan, and even this Venza is actually a little bit larger physically. And interior space-wise, uh, legroom is almost identical in both the Venza and the RAV4, but the RAV somehow has a little bit more cargo capacity in the back. That's just something to know, but both the Venza and the RAV are very similar in sizing. And in 2024, the Venza comes with a lot of great safety tech. Now that I do like, Toyota safety features are legit, and it comes with useful tech like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert as standard, and I appreciate that. And it all works extremely well. Okay, and we have four trim options to choose from in 2024. You got the base model LE, which starts at about 36,000. $300, including destination. Then you move up to the XLE, which is about 40 grand. There's a nightshade, 
which is essentially the XLE, but with blacked out wheels and blacked out trim. That's about 41,600. And the fully loaded limited, that's $44,400. So all of those prices include destination. And let's talk about what these trim levels come with. I recommend the base model LE. It's the best value at 36 grand. Comes with 18 inch wheels, hands-free power lift gate, keyless entry. It does come with cloth seats, which I'm not completely against. And the driver's side seat is power adjustable. You get dual zone climate, an eight inch touchscreen, wireless phone charging and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And you get a six speaker audio system. You step it up to the XLE. Usually this is a good value in Toyota vehicles, but in my opinion, I don't think it's worth paying an extra four grand to step up to the XLE. Uh, but it does come with more stylish 19 inch wheels with uh, synthetic leather seats, heated front seats, a larger 12.3 inch touchscreen, and the fully loaded limited is going to get you some niceties like a ventilated front seat, power adjustable passenger seat, nine speaker JBL audio, and a heads up display. Those are great features, but again, paying a lot of money for a limited at over 44 grand. Stick with the LE, get a efficient product because these Toyota hybrids, they really are efficient. They're practical, they're spacious. It's a good all-rounder. It serves the people extremely well. I just wish it was a little bit more refined, a little bit quieter. And I wish journalists would stop lying to people and calling this like a pseudo Lexus when it's absolutely not. Granted, some of the new Lexus products are also cutting corners and uh, they're not as quiet and refined as they used to be. But regardless, let's not lead on the public. Let's not hype these things up more than they need to be. This is a efficient, stylish, and spacious car. And let's just leave it at that. And um, it is worth buying because Toyotas are sought after. They have great residual values and they're not quite as disposable as the competitors. And if you wanna save some money, going with the 2023 Venza, is not a bad option. There is a broker on the Lease Hacker Forum named Jim. He's like the largest Toyota broker. Um, I'm not affiliated with this broker. However, we did purchase a Tundra from him once and we actually had to go to Pennsylvania to pick up the Tundra because shipping was impossible to get at the time. But we did get a great deal on the vehicle and he's offering like three grand off MSRP on a 2023 LE Venza. So on a 36K Venza, selling it for 33, that's really not bad. Uh, you could save even more by going with a RAV4 because RAV4s are slightly more affordable still. But I don't know, when I did a leasing calculator, a base model Venza with a 3K discount, which is about 6% off MSRP, I ran the numbers on Auto Companion's free leasing calculator. And on a zero money down lease, it came out to be around 470 a month, which is not bad interest rate on the lease as of right now november of 2023 is 5.8% and even with that high interest rate that payment is not ridiculous you can do msds or even a one pay lease perhaps and get that payment down even lower so that's great if you want to purchase the vehicle after the lease ends because when you can get that interest rate down as low as possible you're actually building more equity in the lease and you've built more equity as a whole so when you go to purchase the vehicle at the end of the lease, you can for the most part just pay that residual amount and make the vehicle yours. And I think that's great if you happen to like the vehicle after the three year lease is up or you can just turn it back in. That's, that's good. That's why I like the flexibility of a lease and that's why I always like to make sure that a vehicle leases out well in case people do want to purchase the vehicle at the end of the lease. And using a broker in this instance would be worth it, but it's a pain to go to Pennsylvania and drive the car back and deal with shipping. Uh, shipping costs are pretty expensive now and that can certainly eat into these discounts and he obviously does charge a broker fee and um, all of that is going to lower your discount to the point where you might only get $1,500 off if you're having the vehicle shipped and at that point you can maybe even negotiate that on a local vehicle but it's good to have options. You know, Toyota dealerships, they are kind of a pain to deal with. They're almost as bad as Ford dealerships now. I don't know. If your local dealership is playing games with you, then it might be worth working with a broker, but that's your call. I just want to show you 
all of the options and I want to show you everything that's possible. And hopefully you can appreciate that. Not many do though. You know, they don't understand that I'm actually on the side of the consumer and I'm only just trying to save people money, right? Uh, which is something that no other journalist is trying to do. None of the other car reviewers are ever going to bother to share with you resources and tools that you can use to save money and to do research in this current crazy market. They'll just make some broad claims and leave you in the dark and that's about it. Hopefully you can appreciate this clear and concise content and the honesty in this content. If you do, consider liking and subscribing. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.